books like this just show just how like utterly warped our categories are this book like really pushed me to being like you know i don't identify i'm like trying not to identify with the left anymore i'm trying to just be like i am an anarchist because um this just shows just how much of a fucking mess the categories were in the 20th century at some point you just need to like just start over and clear mm-hmm. away the mess because i think people just like don't appreciate just how useful it is to be able to like think clearly about your objectives and the means by which you can reach them and actually i think part of that might actually be like the education system and our work culture more broadly where like the actual purpose most of the time is not actually to achieve the stated ends but it's to like get other things and if we achieve these stated ends that's nice but really a lot more of it is like about control i think that's a very good comparison i think that's exactly right with rel- relative to the kind of uh reforms that were instituted in post-1989 uh soviet bloc right is that they were like yes we are here to introduce more competition and show you how to operate your economic system because clearly you have failed to be able to do it in the mm, you know 72 years you've been here right and the way we're going to do it is actually by making you lick this boot so we just call it neoliberalism and you're going to do what it says now <laughs> right? like, and it's like oh okay this is actually about control got it <laughs> like uh, which is kind of the same with work right like um, not to take too much of a tangent into it but like being a person who works in a white collar a job it's interesting to see the rituals that white collar people do and I'm now entering my own ethnographer shoes because it's kind of what I do for a living. In technology, I think this kind of stuff is really, really cut. I'm using tongue in cheek here, cutting edge, right? <laughs> Where people are like, okay, cool. Uh, how are we going to develop software? And someone will say, well, we should use the agile methodology because it means we will not have to plan. And then all of this stuff devolves into becoming a locus of control for the managers. It's never about actually empowering people as it is. It's instituted as empowering people always. Uh, we just want you to understand the business context and your customers more closely. We're going to let go of the chains. What ends up happening is strict, regimented documentation of every single thing you're doing in a two week period so that you can deliver things in a predictable way for your manager. It's never getting closer to customers so you can understand what they really need, focusing on the most important thing and with freedom and autonomy, which if you read the Agile Manifesto, it's literally fucking right there. Right? It's like people before process and then they all the other things, right? So uh, it's an interesting thing, right? How when you say you're going to be an anarchist without adjectives, I think it's a pretty much the point, right? Is that if you have a very specific objective for thwarting these types of relations of power between people, then it gives you a clear lens to be able to say, actually, that's going to lead us towards bullshit. And we're going to be fired in it forever because the fundamental approach to it doesn't address the question of power, right? So like, I think that's a very good point. Yeah. And when you're in like a conflict between like two agents, I think at some point, like, it just becomes non-deterministic, especially if, like, those two agents have a lot of freedom in terms of how they can act. And so, like, defining yourself by any one strategy is just, like, a bad idea. Yeah, and I think that that's, like, one of the key things in the book for me is in every chapter is you see you see how much this monolith of capitalism versus communism just did so much damage to everyone's brains. 